I definitely think this one about Nick Claxton is interesting as we're hearing right here. Nick Claxton's more available according to Mark Stein at the Stein line than we initially thought leading up to the trade deadline. As Claxton, suppose you want somebody that more available than previously advertised. The question surrounding the Nets' long-term plans with Claxton, he's making 9.6 this year. As the center is set to become an unrestricted free agency, we know that Dorian Finney-Smith, Royce O'Neal, and Spencer Dinwiddie are also supposedly guys that are most likely to be traded before the deadline. This year, the Nets, you know, they started the season out, I think it was like 13 and something. It was a solid start. Their 17th offensive rating, 115.8. 117 point 117 defensive rating which is 18th and they're minus 1.2 which is 19th net rating and their league average 36.5 percent three-point shooting team now they're led by 22 points per game mikhail bridges who was supposed to be an all-star just didn't can what we thought was going to carry over didn't carry over cam thomas is a legit 20 points per game score but he's probably better off the bench role mikhail's probably more suited to be a co-star not the superstar cam johnson also a guy that we thought was going to be a 20 points per game score because of an amazing playoff series it's a 14 points per game guy he is who we thought he was spencer didn't we supposed to be again this is the media saying is a guy who's a cancer guy he's averaging 13 tonight nick clarkson's averaging 12 and a half and 10 and a half his defense has kind of fallen off the 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 floor and with cleaning the glass if we look over here it's not necessarily the prettiest let me confirm right here what i got with cleaning the glass what we're, we're what we're seeing right here is a hey, i'm not trying to like disparage him but i think the big problem is nick claxton just it went down and who's trading for it? it's 9.6 it's going to be a team that wants a backup center like could the Clippers trade P.J. Tucker and Bones Highland for Nick Claxton? I kind of think that's a good deal. If I'm the Nets, I think that's a good deal. I think that's a bargain deal. If you know you're going to lose Nick Claxton, don't lose the guy for nothing, okay? I think that's my that's my big thing. Like, you can't let the guy be gone for nothing. So let's see what here what we're hearing. The Athletic has, like, this big board that they're doing, which honestly has been really good, and they've done a, a good job of putting it together. So I want to I want to hear you guys' opinions on what you think that of their their opinions I guess we could say on the current situation with Nick Claxton and I'm actually like super surprised by the the fact that he's a guy that they don't want to resign I think the big problem with them is we just don't know what his value is and I think that's the the biggest thing is trying to figure out what is Nicholas Claxton's value just he's a springy guy. He's playing good, you know, when he plays good, he shot 70% from the field last year, like solid dude when his stats are identical, but the efficiency went down this year is the big thing. And when you look at him, what are you realistically getting? You're getting guys tall, lanky, he can switch out on guards, you know, the effort level sometimes you could say is questionable and this year he went from his points per shot attempt went from being in the 90 basically the 92 93rd percentile for back-to-back -back seasons to the 66 percentile and his just his turnover rate is just you know it it went it went down which is good but if you look over here defensive rebounding his block rate still you know 92 percentile last year was 98 but the steal went from 73rd percentile to 50 percentile and again the the fact that the i think he's he's became a better rebounder but defensively he's just not where he was you know, a year ago and i i thought the he just was you know literally 95 percentile back-to-back years effective field goal percentage that's absurd 94 percentile in two point percentage you know and now he's 76 percentile on effective field goal percentage and 70 just it's bad and De'Ron sharp's a dog okay that's the big problem guys De'Ron sharp is when healthy dude this guy in 37 games 16 minutes a night is averaging seven seven rebounds seven and a half points it's like if he was playing 32 minutes a night he would be averaging 15 points and 14 rebounds with two blocks one steal three assists it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing going on right there so i'm i'm on camp deron sharp right here look give my man deron minutes maybe trade you know claxton for wendell carter